Hi guys, this is Matt and welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the influence of the sliding weight track on drivers. Um, so in particular for today we're using the Ping G425, but most of the companies now are following a similar model. Um, essentially the movable weight on the back of the club head uh, can be set to either neutral, draw biased, which is towards the heel, and fade biased, which is towards the toe. Um, and this is a, a big part of our fitting process now uh, to help people overcome, I guess, their bad shot. Okay, so today today's test really is all about, you know, does it actually make a difference? Um, does it influence direction, curvature? Um, can it affect the strike as well? Because I know of a lot of uh, people, uh, if they tend to hit it a lot off the heel, they would position the weight in the heel and vice versa with the toe strike. So there's a bit to consider here. So today we're gonna to hit five shots uh, from neutral, then from draw and then fade, so heel and then toe. Uh, and we're gonna look at some numbers and just to see if there is any real difference. Um, and hopefully by the end of it, this might be able to help you guys uh, in your sort of fitting journey uh, to see if you can sort of, I guess, straighten your drives out. Um, so let's kick off with the neutral setting. Um, I'm going to hit five shots. Okay, low and left one to start with. Bit of a loosener there. More like it. Okay, my natural shape tends to be a little bit of right to left. Again, to give you an idea, as I start to warm up, uh, club speed should get closer to 106, 107. So decent, decent distances there, slowly getting up. I am seeing it turn over, so I'm hoping with my game in particular, that the weight on the toe uh, should help, you know, reduce that left miss. Um, that's the idea anyway. Yeah, another solid strike, but turning over. Let's just try one more. Again, turning over. So that's the neutral, the neutral setting. Um, now, what's going to be interesting for me today? You know, my bad one is obviously left there. If I now move this towards the toe, um, is that going to help reduce that? So essentially, by making the toe of the club heavier, it slows down that closure rate. Um, that's the that's the theory. So, as I said, all brands follow a similar um, story, if you like. Certainly been a big advancement in the recent years, the, the movable weight track. Um, interestingly enough, on, on this Ping driver, the weight track's actually quite small, um, but Ping are saying that it still has the, the desired effect. Uh, you do see on other brands, it's a slightly bigger weight track. Um, so this in the toe now of the of the club um, and hopefully it can reduce that uh, that miss to the left okay so let's see in particular if we can sort of straighten out that that direction no improvement there left again Bit better. Again, if, if you guys haven't seen my last video, make sure you check that out. Um, that's on the, the loft sleeve. So interesting how the loft sleeve really helped direction. So for the, the hookers or the faders, slicers out there, 
adjusting the loft can definitely help. I, I certainly found that reducing the loft um, helped me with that left miss. Definitely check that video out. Video out. Yeah, marginally better. Be interesting to see the stats at the end, um, but it's definitely helping somewhat. Obviously not completely getting rid of it, but uh, it feels like that toe is, is slowing down a fraction. Yeah, that felt like a, a good swing. Obviously, the result there speaks for itself. Uh, they are coming out a bit low today, uh, but direction is definitely better. Let's try one more, and then we'll have a little look at the, at the numbers. Again, pretty straight. So, let's have a look at these. Um, so, my, my bad ones, left clearly the weight in the heel isn't going to help um, but we've put it in, in the toe there uh, just to see if there is any improvement and certainly on the on the dispersion there you'd probably say it definitely is uh, you can see the the white is neutral uh, two big misses left uh, and the uh, the orange color there is the sort of fade biased weight in the toe uh, the, yes there's still that one big miss left so it's not going to completely get rid of it but it's definitely helped um, let's just take a look at the table here and see if there's any sort of clear indication if it is helping um, so certainly on this end column the side total 79 feet left with the fade biased 122 feet uh, with the neutral so definitely helping um, spin rate pretty similar slightly less uh, with the with the fade bias but not a lot in it um, Launch is a touch lower with, with the fade. Interestingly enough, again, certainly last last uh, the last review I did with the the change in the loft sleeve that af affected the face angle. So as we reduced it, the loft it opened it up. Um, uh, so potentially affecting the launch angle there. Ball speed a bit more with the uh, the fade biased again. Um, and overall height a touch lower. Not not masses in it. Um, but I guess the, the big thing, you know, really what this is around is the face angle. So this middle column um, with the neutral, uh, it was minus 2.7, uh, which is 2.7 degrees closed, but only minus 1.9 with the fade. Uh, so it's definitely helping. Um, let's now try the polar opposite. Now, as I said, this doesn't apply to my game, but I think it's good uh, to... To, to try it um, now we're just going to put heel and draw so anybody that tends to slice the ball um, as certainly guys that I fit um, I would put the weight more towards the heel to help um, essentially speed up the toe so get that get the sort of the toe end of the club closing faster um, and that quite often has a has a good effect you know people sometimes go for the draw biased clubs if you've got a quite a big slice but if it's if it's perhaps a slice that maybe just cuts a little bit you don't want to go quite as extreme um, then having these movable weights can help I also think long term as well uh, I think the weights are good because you can always move them back if you if you're working on the swing um, you know, if you've got a draw bias driver, you know, it, you, I guess you've always got a draw bias driver where with the sliding weights, you can move it back if, if the swing improves, uh, if you like. So let's uh, let's hit some. As I said, this isn't the setting for me, um, but let's, let's hit some anyway and let's see kind of what happens to that flight. We'll try and put the same swing on it uh, and see what happens. So weight in the, uh, in the heel there. exactly what we thought low and left clearly not uh, the one for me but you know as i said you guys that that tend to slice it 
can definitely help speed up that toe. Now I do have to be conscious of not trying to manipulate this. I want to try and keep the swing pretty similar to keep it a fair test. You know, definitely felt like a, a better swing. Um, turn it up, just turning over, uh, definitely manageable that one. Yeah, another good shot. Again, it's, I guess during these tests, it's just for me trying to be mindful that I'm not tweaking, adjusting the swing to straighten things out. Because I want to give you guys a fair representation of what this weight track is doing. Um, those last two were, were better. Again, that felt like a good strike, but it's, it's turned over. That felt like it was a, a decent swing that, that should have been fairly straight, but clearly it's, uh, it's moving too much. Let's try one more. Well, we got one going right of the target, uh, just, to, just to throw an anomaly in there. Um, but yeah, quite interesting doing that, that test. Um, again, just looking at the dispersion, obviously that one going right at the end there. Two big, oh sorry, yeah, one left, and then another one that's sort of long and left up towards the bunker there. Uh, again, just looking at the, at the table, um, you know, the draw bias is sitting at 61 feet, but that is mainly because of that last one there at 90 feet right. So. There is an improvement, uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, again, you know, you, you, you think about the sort of fitting process now, you know, yes, you've got the shaft change, but then in the head, you've got, you know, most companies now have the three different types of heads, you know, so in this ping range, you've got the max, the low spin, and the, the SFT, the draw bias. This is the low spin that I've used today, which is generally more down the, the route that I go. Uh, so you've got three different heads. Uh, you've got the change in loft and you've got the change in weight. And as I said, all the shaft options as well. So there's a lot that goes in um, and it's something that you should definitely consider. So gone are the days really where you should be buying off the shelf because if you get the, a fitting, it can really help your game. Um, I have found this useful. Uh, I do think that the, 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 the toe weight helped at uh, some degree. Um, Aside from you know looking at that there, the, the the draw bias just threw in one to the right at the end there, which probably threw out the results a little bit, but definitely worth something uh, to consider. Uh, I did hope you enjoy that, guys. Um, I certainly did. Uh, definitely something to consider when you do get fitted for a driver. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Uh, give me a like, a comment down below uh, if there is any other uh, videos you'd like to see, uh, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.